Whenever I get my hands like this, someone inevitably needs me. If you try to do it all, you actually get so overwhelmed that you end up doing less than if you had just a smaller plan to start out with. It's Natalie, so glad you stopped by my channel to hang out with me today while we get some stuff done around here. We have a fun outdoor project that Weston and I are working on and I plan to share a little homestead update with you guys and some fun things that we're looking forward to. I also have a couple of recipes that I'm gonna be making and doing some food prep, so I'm gonna be sharing that as well along with some motivation and encouragement as always. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I'm gonna pop you up here on my tripod and we're gonna get cooking. Okay, so our first recipe, we're gonna prep some pizza dough. I asked my mom for the pizza dough recipe earlier today and she laughed because apparently almost to the day, three years ago, I asked her for this pizza dough recipe. So I probably haven't made much pizza homemade in the last three years, if that's the case. But I have been doing so much baking in this new kitchen, I just feel inspired. Maybe it's the weather and just this sort of homey feeling that I've got after we put so much blood, sweat, and tears into this kitchen. And it's not finished, as you can see. We still have particle board for our countertops and no backsplash and, you know, like ripped up wallboards over there and everything. But that doesn't mean that I can't enjoy what we've got right now. And we are going to start with a pizza dough recipe. So I'll have the full recipe written in the description box for you guys. So if I miss something while I'm preparing, um, it'll all be down there. Or maybe I'll make a blog post, we'll see. So this is four ounces of hot water, a tablespoon of uh, sugar. I'm just gonna mix that around really quick and get that dissolving. And then we're gonna add half a tablespoon of active dry yeast. And if you think you hear Minecraft in the background, you would be right. It yeah, is. I Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> it's screen time for the kids right now since we did our gymnastics this morning. They did their homeschooling today and their rooms are clean. So now we need half a tablespoon, I'm eyeballing it, of dry active yeast. So we're gonna let this little mixture sit for about 10 minutes so that the yeast can get all nice and bubbly. I'm gonna take a potty break and I'll see you in 10 minutes. Okay, potty break over. And yes, I washed my hands. That is looking nice and bubbly, as it should, and I was realizing this <laughs> recipe by my mom, she makes it in her KitchenAid stand mixer, which I don't have one of those. It's a goal of mine, I will get one of those eventually. Um, so actually, I should probably just be doing all of this in the bowl, but this is ready to go. Okay, so next we need a tablespoon of oil. It calls for olive oil. I've got avocado oil right now. I definitely need to do some grocery shopping. And then two and a half cups of flour. So I'm going to do a cup and a half of all-purpose flour and then a cup of whole wheat flour. There's the whole wheat flour, there we go. Okay, so KitchenAid stand mixers. Um, I would love to know if you guys have any recommendations about those in particular. Um, should I get the five quart size, the six quart size? Do you have any strong feelings? about the options out there. I do a lot more baking now that the kids are older and they can really help me. And so I think it would, it would definitely make my life easier. Give me your advice, suggestions, cautionary tales. Let me know it all. I was gonna say, this is looking really dry, but in the instructions that my mother wrote me, it says add an additional four to five ounces of warm water. I'm just gonna add a little at a time until it's the right consistency. Oh, now I put too much water in it, okay. So I guess we're gonna go in with more flour and I probably should be going in with whole wheat flour, you know, hashtag healthy. I feel like I didn't put salt in this. Did I put salt in this? Half teaspoon of salt. No, I didn't. And yes, I only have flaky salt right now. Again, I need to go grocery shopping. Why am I filming a cook with me if I don't even have all the groceries on hand? Oh well, okay, I'm just gonna kinda crunch this up a little bit finer between my fingers so it's not as flaky, but I'm just gonna incorporate that in. And you're supposed to knead it. Yes, a KitchenAid would definitely make this easier. All right, that's looking good and smells like mom's making pizza dough. <laughs> I think it's just the yeast, but it smells good. It's looking good. That looks like the right consistency. Now I have to wash off my hands to turn my phone on to look at the recipe. 
I really need to get these written down. I'm gonna cover this up. Oh, and yes, by the way, we used the last of that old cling wrap, that roll that we had since the year the boys were born. First time in eight years I bought another roll of it. We used so little of it. I actually like to use that beeswax wrap. Um, I've used that a lot, which is probably why it takes us a while to go through this plastic. But this is what I have on hand right now. This is gonna sit and uh, rise a bit, and I'm gonna move on to our scones recipe. This is another recipe that my mom used to make, although she didn't develop it. This actually comes from, and you 90s kids are gonna laugh, this comes from the Kirsten American Girl doll cookbook. This is Kirsten's oat scones, and it is such a good recipe. And this recipe is so easy to make and it doesn't have any eggs in it. I'm allergic to eggs, uh, chicken eggs specifically, and um, some scone recipes actually have eggs in them. Like if you go out to a bakery, I always have to ask, and nine times out of 10, their scones, or scones as you across the pond would say, have eggs in them. Not this recipe though. So we are going to start with one and a quarter cup of flour. So I'm doing one cup of all purpose flour and then a quarter cup of the whole wheat flour. Quarter cup of the whole wheat, there we go. Half tisp of baking soda, which is one of the measuring spoon sizes I happen to have. I literally have a half a teaspoon and one tablespoon. I need to update my, <laughs> my measuring spoon situation. One tisp of baking powder, there we go. So two of those. And yes, I know that there are baking powders cheaper than the Clabber Girl brand, but there is just something in my heart that will not let me buy anything but Clabber Girl baking powder. It's just so nostalgic. Look at that picture. Those biscuits look so good. That mom looks like she has her life together and all of her children are, is she plucking a chicken? She's plucking a chicken. I never noticed that. Okay, that, that just got a little bit morbid, but it's good baking powder. Okay, half teaspoon of salt. Flaky salt it is, and half a cup of sugar. Okay, I have made this with stevia before, uh, but we're going for the full sugar. Is someone here, guys? No. Someone is here, it's dad. <laughs> Bustin's home, very cool. And you'll see more of him in this vlog, probably tomorrow with the stuff that we're doing tomorrow. I'm really excited, not something we've got planned for tomorrow, but. Oh no, he blows up! That's not happening, that's not happening. It calls for a full stick of butter, half a cup of sugar and a full stick of butter. I never claimed that this was healthy, but oh my, are they good. So I'm just cutting up this butter into smaller pieces. Um, I want to get one of those like pastry cutter things that has kind of like a, a glorified whisk at the end of a handle. This thing. I actually ordered one from Target today when I was out doing my Target run and it was not in stock. Using one of those pastry blenders would be ideal because it helps the butter stay really nice and cold because you're not working it with your warm fingers. But I've literally never made this recipe with a pastry blender because I've never owned one <laughs> before. Uh, I've always used my hands and it turns out just fine. It's what you do with what you got. I say that for so many different things in life. And if I had a pastry blender, I'd be using it. If I wanted a pastry blender, but apparently, so did everyone else. And if you think you hear banging outside, you'd be right. Weston right now is loading up the last of the trash and stuff that we had from our kitchen remodel. He's gonna go take a dump run because we need that trailer to do a very special pickup tomorrow, which I will not mention within earshot of a certain little someone's. But this is the texture that we're going for with this mixture, sort of grainy and fluffy. And now I'm going to add the oats and sour cream. We've got one cup of oats. Don't tell Weston I'm using his fancy sprouted oats because that was easier to access than the big crock in my pantry. <laughs> Mix this until it's well incorporated and then we're adding a third cup of sour cream. I think cultured sour cream tastes best in this recipe. I've tried it with both and you can use whatever sour cream you have on hand quite honestly. But if you're making a grocery list for this recipe and cultured sour cream is available, go for it. It's like 30 cents more for a 16 ounce of it, at least it is where I live, and it is worth every penny. And I do this every time, this part of the process where you're trying to get the sour cream incorporated in, I just end up using my hands for it because I can feel where the blocks of sour cream are. Do you want me to button up your dress? 
My hands look like this right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> Give me a second. That might be another one of the reasons why I haven't done much baking up until now in my life is because whenever I get my hands like this, someone inevitably needs me. So I'm gonna put some parchment paper down on my baking tray and then just get this out of the bowl right onto it. Oh, and look at that, my second camera died. This is the part where the detail of the second camera angle would really come in handy. I'm just sort of patting this mixture into like a little loaf, oh gosh, a little loaf like that onto the parchment paper. And this is gonna bake up and then you cut it into little triangles and it's so good. I almost always forget to do this. You're supposed to cut it into its wedges before baking it, so. You can cut it into whatever sizes make sense for whoever's eating these scones. I've got six wedges here, that's looking good. And then this goes into the oven, 375, for about 15 minutes. I'm just gonna cut up this fruit here and play some music for you guys. And while you watch this little fruit chopping montage, would you let me know in the comments, what is your favorite breakfast food? Smells amazing. Can't wait for breakfast tomorrow. Frozen. Oh, it's so tiny. <laughs> Kids love finding anything that's like a tiny version. She just found the tiniest little grape. What? I want to see the tiniest grape, want to see the tiniest grape ever. <laughs> so cute. I can't stop eating these grapes. They're so good. Cold out of the fridge. But I've got everything for breakfast prepared. Um, I'm going to make the eggs and the bacon and stuff fresh and oh my goodness those scones are smelling so good right now they're almost done oh, that was good it smells even better look at that beautiful perfect golden brown the scones are back in because they actually needed a little bit more time i discovered but i was able to load the dishwasher this sink could definitely use a good scrub out but i'll do that after the dishes tonight right now I need to focus on this dining room. This dining room table is like the hub of our house. We do everything here, homeschooling, eating, crafts. Got a mess from lunch and some color books and stuff there. And honestly, my grandma would just be thrilled about this. I get questions in every post. Where did that dining room table come from? And the answer is the 1970s. My grandma and grandpa bought this teak Danish dining room set from Scan Design in the 1970s when my mom was little. And this has had so many family dinners, so many holidays hosted here. And now that we've taken over a lot of the hosting that my grandma and grandpa used to do when they were with us, uh, we've taken over that here in this house. The table is now ours, but it needs a little help right now. So let's get this cleaned up. Okay, feeling much better in here. Right now, I'm gonna do a little bit of like wood treatment. This is the first time we've ever had like a nice solid wood table and teak is a really nice wood, but it definitely takes maintenance. And this table, I mean, it's, it's been kept really nice over the last 
several decades. But as you can see, there are parts of it that are looking just a little bit worn and dry. I love the lived in look of this table and I'm actually not really interested in totally refinishing it and putting like a new stain or anything like that. I know you can do this, but there's just something about like how the table is a little bit faded in some spots and a little bit weathered in others that just makes it so charming and so much like this is my grandma and grandpa's table. It's really, really sentimental to me to see these spots here. Like down the middle, you can tell that it's a lot darker because she always had a runner on the table. And then in the lighter spots, it got faded by the sunlight that would come in in their waterfront home. Seeing that wear and that history on this table just it's just really sentimental to me, but I am wanting to condition it a bit. And so I actually called the scan design uh, store in Linwood, Washington that my grandma and grandpa bought this from, and they suggested this product. It's by Karen and Doset. Is that, I, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it's this natural wood oil and this works really well for teak. And I spot tested it last night in a kind of an inconspicuous spot just to make sure that it didn't mess anything up because that would be a tragedy and it's looking great. So I'm going to just spread this over the rest of the surface. Is this what it means to have growing pains? Never come out the way you Just as what does it smell like? Orange. It does smell like orange. Yep. Grandma Wendy has told me stories of when Grandma Judy would condition their table and how it always made the room smell like orange. You can see the spots here that I have done versus the ones that I haven't. And this shine will go down some because this is really fresh oil on here. But man, it just brings out just the beauty of this teak grain. It's gonna sit overnight and uh, just kind of sink into this wood and it won't be so like oily tomorrow morning when we have breakfast at it. And speaking of breakfast, this batch of scones turned out beautifully. It's all cooked up now. Oh, and tell me you were raised by a frugal mother without telling me you were raised by a frugal mother. This pizza dough has been rising. Oh, someone poked a hole in the plastic at the top. I have elephants in my house. <laughs> They're running around. So I'm just gonna get this pizza topped, cooked up for the kids, and we're gonna enjoy the rest of this beautiful evening. The next morning, the kids are having second breakfast right now. First breakfast was so good, they just couldn't get enough, so we're going round two. Kitchen's a mess, the whole house is a mess, if I'm being honest. That's just how it goes. Uh, Weston is out right now doing our special pickup, which we ended up telling the kids what we're getting. Do you guys wanna tell them what we're getting? A swing set! A swing set! We were gonna keep it a surprise, uh, but we decided to tell them for various reasons. We're really excited about this. We wanted a swing set for a while and we've been shopping them around actually for a couple of years now. And now that we're here in this house, we decided that we wanted to get a pretty like sturdy, heavy duty wood swing set that adults can swing on. Um, not just like a little kitty swing set. So we found one on like the Facebook marketplace for dirt cheap. It's like 150 bucks. It's at least $500 worth of lumber in this set, so we scored. Look who's here! <laughs> Weston just showed up with the swing set materials, so I'm gonna help him unload it a bit, and we're gonna scope out where the new swing set is gonna go. If I don't break my neck while walking down these stairs. Oh my gosh, so slippery. Yeah. 
the swing set that we found on Facebook Marketplace is bigger than what we would assemble. There's some like sections and pieces of it that we won't be using. We're thinking maybe just three swings in like a tall section and then over time we'll add maybe, I don't know, something to climb, something to slide down. 150 bucks for all this lumber is a good deal whether we turn it into a swing set or not. But we'll turn at least part of it into a swing set. <laughs> and here come the snowballs. <laughs> <laughs> on the window Watch the time float <laughs> on Stop with it! Please stop! You're getting cool snow in my boots a memento This right here was where that big shed was that we took out um, and gave to my mom and dad the reason we took out that shed is because we really wanted this space for like a play area for the kids. It just took up so much space. So we are gonna put the swing set probably just right here at this tree line and they'll be able to swing. When they're on the swing, they'll be able to look into the backyard while mama's doing some gardening. They'll be able to look into the house and I'll be able to look out at them. We got quite the pile of lumber going on there, don't we? Take apart all the good things Stripped away what's there to do So many times I try But I just don't remember already has been such a blessing. It's already taken on several different iterations as far as swings and rings and other fun stuff on there. And like I said, we'll keep adding to it and changing it up as the kids grow and as our needs change. Um, but I wanted to give you guys a quick sort of homestead update. Um, oh, Haley says tour of her clubhouse. The kids actually have what they call their clubhouse underneath this bramble. Um, there's a hollow underneath here that they are pretending is a little house. It's so fun and they've been bringing some materials and stuff that we've taken out of the house um, as we've done remodeling and they put little flooring down in their house. It's really cute. I'll have to have them show you sometime. But the boys call that their clubhouse and Haley calls this garden space over here her clubhouse. Oh, are you drawing an X for? For no boys allowed. For no boys allowed? You can see that we have some like rotten boards and stuff and overgrown patches and these garden beds that need to just sort of be overhauled and ripped out of here and taken out. Um, I think this garden was originally a, like a flower, cut flower garden um, because we have, I think these are rose bushes. Those are some hefty thorns. This was built here by the previous owners and it's actually a really good spot for a garden because of the sun exposure. And as the weather has gone better and we've had the snow melt, um, we have seen like where that good sun exposure is this time of the year when people start planting things in this area. And our ultimate goal is to move this garden to a different spot because you can see all of these bramble and blackberries over here. It's really dense and thick and overgrown. Our property line ends a ways that way that if we cleared all of this out, did some landscaping and grading, planted some really good grass, we could have a really nice spacious rolling sort of park-like yard, which is the ultimate goal. And having the garden here kind of stands in the way because if that bramble situation was taken care of, then we would have an, a garden awkwardly in the middle of the grass, grassy yard, if that makes sense. But we are actually for this year, for this year's garden, and I just had my mom over and we scoped it out, we took a walk around, we looked at things and sort of strategized because she is 
an expert gardener. She suggested that we do a container garden, which basically makes what you plant pretty portable. So if like halfway through the summer, we do some landscaping and some ripping out and we actually need to move the pots and the, the plots where we've planted things, we're able to do that. And I think that's a really great plan. We're really eager to start planting stuff and to grow our own food. It's going to be on a smaller scale this year, but I'm really Really excited to just jump into it and my personality I really want to just like do the full meal deal I want to do it all and I've learned over the years that if you if you try to do it all you actually get so overwhelmed that you end up doing less than if you had just a smaller plan to start out with so we're going with a smaller plan this year giving ourselves some freedom to change our minds part way through their um, homestead update for you guys is that we are going to be adopting some chickens and we have been scoping out a little spot for them so here on the other side of the house um, whew, sun is really really bright so we have the trampoline here that's just where it landed when we first moved and it, it's been working great um we have this area which is so fun i would have loved this as a kid so this is sort of like this leaf mold area grass doesn't really grow here we've got this nice little terrain of leaves that have fallen it's got great shade but then there's partial sunlight if you want to get in there and we thought having a little coop and a little fenced in area for the chickens in this spot would be really cool plus if chicken stuff gets a little bit stinky which it can sometimes it's pretty downwind we that's another thing that we've been observing as we've lived here for a little while is which direction is the wind typically blowing of course it's it swirls and it, it does random things but typically it's blowing this way as you can see it's blowing toward my face which takes that smell away from the house so if we have a barbecue going in the backyard you're not sitting there eating your delicious food and smelling chicken poop <laughs> really trying to think through our choices and our plans rather than just rushing into something and then having to redo it i know we're not going to get it right the first time i'm fully prepared to have to redo things but if i can prevent it as much as possible by thinking it through doing my research talking to people who have been there done that like my mom like other people here on youtube or friends that i have who have done this before and i think i'm gonna set myself up a bit better than if i just was like yep let's go to the store let's pick some chicks out let's just do it little spot here for chickens clearing all of these brambles out all of this behind the um trampoline here trampoline will probably be in a different spot eventually all of these brambles and blackberry bushes this all would become yard permanent spot for the garden might end up over here in like this terraced area we have yet to just see what the sun exposure and everything looks like as we go throughout the season so there's a little homestead update for you guys a little walkthrough of the plans that we have here for the near future you could probably hear it in my voice I've sneezed like 25 times <laughs> since picking up this camera and walking outside allergies right now are just just insane <laughs> but that's not going to stop me from getting outside because i just love it so much and the kids have been loving it having that swing set built here has been so great because weston and i have just been able to work out here and get some stuff started as the kids are playing let me know in the comments if you enjoyed seeing sort of a cook with me portion in this video i am planning on doing like meal prep or cooking or like what's for dinner videos for you guys um in longer form not just having it be part of a video but being the video so let me know if that's something that you would like to see or if you have any requests for videos here in the future i'm pretty wide open as far as content that i could make and i i would love to know what you guys think and um what you would like to see on my channel gardening content is going to be coming up and my videos have always changed and evolved as my life changes and evolves and i've always really tried to stay true to who i am and what i'm going through rather than just like sticking with the same old same old that i've always done that's actually not the best strategy as a youtuber i'll, I'll pull back the curtain a little bit and just say that business wise i've probably hindered myself a bit but it's it's not all about that for me i just want to genuinely share my life and what i'm going through and what i want to share and I trust that there will be people out there who want to see that and I'm just gonna stay true to me and being true to me is gonna be starting to do some of this gardening stuff and raising chickens and homesteading stuff and 
some cook with me and, and content like that. So I hope you enjoyed today's video coming along with me. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks so much for spending a little part of your day here with me on my channel. And I'll catch you later.